there has always been a problem in popular music with drugs. It's just the drugs have changed. But if you realize that in the jazz world, great artists like Charlie Parker uh, fell victim to heroin, and it's well documented that uh, great artists ranging from Ray Charles to Johnny Cash had their periods of heroin use. Different drugs became available in the 1960s. First, in the late 60s, marijuana became widespread. And then, with the opening of a distribution network in the early 70s, cocaine use became widespread. And we all know about the use of the uh, chemical LSD in the 1960s. This went hand in hand with something which I'm surprised that very few sociologists talk about, which was the window of a quarter century of sexual opportunity. The only time in history where it was safe to have sex without fear of dying. Because in the 1940s, penicillin was discovered, and syphilis, which had knocked off some of the great composers of the past, was now curable. You could have sex without fear of dying. And the Western world went into a quarter century of anything goes, let's try it, sexual behavior. This, of course, was tragically cut short when in the early 80s it was discovered that there was this virus, HIV, that was leading to serious illness and terrible death. And many of the people who died in the first wave of AIDS deaths had contracted the virus without even knowing it had existed during the late 1970s. But the 70s were the period of my career and my life as what I call a lifestyle tourist, where I would see things, be too afraid to take part in them, but jot them down in my history books. The, the 70s were a period of consumption of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. The, the title is not a joke, it's real. Ian Dury was drawing on it from everyone's real life. Uh, and nowadays, uh, if we were to talk about uh, the behavior of people in the 70s, it would sound like science fiction. I don't like to hear people judged for their behavior in the 70s on the standards of today, which are based on what we now know to be safe. In those days, everything was new, and the liberation movements were new. You have to remember there was uh, the free love of the hippie period from the late 60s, and then there was women's liberation and gay liberation. And having sex was in itself a political statement. And so you had everybody having all sorts of sex, some of which today would be found disturbing, and swigging large amounts of alcohol, and just trying drugs without even knowing what was really in them. Yes, Keith Moon was a uh, leading figure in this, let's just put it inside me and see what happens, uh, movement. Um, but there were many other people who, who did this.